Welcome to Daily Watch Talks number 100. So today everything is special. We have a new setting. It feels a bit like I'm chatting with you at the French Bistro, a French cafe in the summer. Parlez-vous champagne? Yeah, exactly. We already ordered the champagne to celebrate. It's one episode no, uh, number 100. So 2000 minutes of Watch Talks, Christian Hagen. And still you were so cheap, you just bought a brute. A brute. It's not even champagne. <laughs> Actually, the badge was Let this the opposite public. of the camera, so people wouldn't notice. So they think it's a Moet Chambon. It, it says brute on the back as yeah, well. Yeah, but we have to save something for episode number 200. Okay. It's all about expectations. It's all about episode 100. How many hours of podcasts do we have? Yeah, that's 2,000 minutes. That's mm. actually almost one and a half day, 36 hours. So if you don't have anything to do the next 36 hours, you can listen to 100 episodes of Daily Watch Talks. Daily Watch Talks. So what we're going to do today, we're going to do a bit of a flashback, what mm. happened in those two years, because yeah. that's also, it's it's uh, we started end of August 2019 and the world was completely different yeah, it was. not only uh, uh, according to watches but in general so we have to do a bit of uh, discussion about that what passed the uh, the table what passed our wrists in two years time mm. what happened to the market um, we're also going to share some nice stuff with you that is uh, something that will be soon in the daily watch shop so yeah. please keep well, an eye on the, that. the the watch roll with a two slot is already in the shop. Uh, the Casio G-Shocks, that looks like Royal Oaks, yeah. also in the shop. The Winder. The Winder. And we have more beautiful stuff, but you, uh, I think Alex will uh, will put it in, will edit it in. Uh, and at the end of this episode number, number 100, mm -hmm. I would like to go back to two weeks ago when we announced our journey to find the perfect chronograph. And we True received that. quite some nice input from you already now. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take that one step further as well. I think we should, because it started out as a fun idea, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, celebrating precision, celebrating Swiss made. We were talking about what kind of complications we would like if we did our own watch. Yeah. And I think we pretty much agree that a chronograph is the thing, but then not only a chronograph. We were talking about the Ratsapan that was made by, by Habring for IWC in the 1990s, um, which I like. I, I have an IWC GST titanium with yeah. the Ratsapan. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we also realized maybe it would be more fun with a flyback, right? Yeah. Every, yeah. Everything for precision. But let's, let's go to that later. First, mm. a bit of celebration and a bit of numbers. So 36 hours of Watch Talks. We started late yeah. August. 2019 yeah. of course we didn't have COVID, but what also happened in those two years is actually quite a dramatic shift in the watch industry in terms of how they promote how they organize how they are interact with customers with retailers etc mm. everything is is different right now everything is very different everything is very digital yeah. very digital uh communication wise we're going to Geneva Watch Days uh, in a week. Yeah, that's actually, no, when we air, it's this week, yeah. basically. Yeah, so next week, we're, you're going to get some... So some we're going to go there, that. and we actually did that last year as well. Uh, but then everything closed down after that. Uh, there was no Dubai Watch Week last year either. There is a Dubai Watch Week this year. So the world is slowly opening up, but opening up to very different atmospheres. Yes, what we had pre-COVID pre was actually physical as the dominant factor of yeah. meeting each other, the yeah. fairs, the, the events, etc. Then, and you had digital that was a bit separated, if you will. Yeah. Now everybody's talking about digital. Fidgetal. Fidgetal. Can you spill it, sir? Genese, Geneva watch days. I'm not going to do that. Maybe after a bit of champagne. Fidgetal. Why don't you open it? It's it's uh, it's number 100. I know. I know. And there you ooh. go. Please, ladies and gentlemen, take the opportunity to subscribe yeah. um, to our podcast because uh, this is only the start, number 100. And we have three glasses on the table. You might notice that because our dear cameraman, David... He uh, he's a drunk and uh, he enjoys a, a glass of bubblies. Yeah, and you that's know. actually also a change. We started with Stacy as our producer. Yes, number Stacy the producer. One. And that's also nice to know. The first 
38 episodes were podcast only. So you probably listen to this on one of the podcast platforms. Then you're now at 100. If you one of our YouTube followers, this is actually episode number 62 that is also covered on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So the champagne is... Uh, Dave, there you go, my friend. Here's to Dave, here's to everybody, here's to you, boss man, here's to Daily Watch, here's to... Uh, Orology. Used to be called uh, a pest in. Here's to Orology, here's to everything timepieces. Yeah. Let's Cheers, celebrate everyone. that. Thank you so much Cheers. for subscribing and tuning in. A glass of warm bubblies. Couldn't you at least have cooled it down? Uh, I was in my car for a one and a half hour, so this is a bit difficult. <laughs> You see, even after 100 <laughs> episodes, not everything is perfect. No, I'm, I'm so not at sorry. All. I mean, this setup is going to change. We just moved in here. Um, actually, Dave, our cameraman, he also he administrates the web shop, uh, which is quite busy. Thank you so much for ordering all the stuff from the Daily Watch uh, web shop. Also, this, what, what is that with your Uwebag? What is that? That little robot. This little robot is uh, something that might you might <laughs> recognize because it was already out there uh, a year ago. I, I think it was in a Mad Gallery store. It was on some other places. And soon it will be uh, in four different variations in the, in the Daily Watch store, including a motorbike, it's a kind of easy rider, yeah. including <laughs> a, a, a fighter robot. It's, it's What can be more fun than this? To yeah. put your put your beautiful watch in, and the winder actually right now they are mounted with the new Norcane. Yeah, the Neverest. That's something that we're also gonna do. Yeah. Uh, go back to two years because mm -hmm. we're celebrating a bit. Uh, in August 19, as we already mentioned, the world was completely different. Also investment wise, because Christian, I did some check on the market value of some watches. Which watches? The 5711. I thought we were never discussing it. Not the green one, no, no. But this is the, this is the regular one. It was available, of course, already in, in uh, September 19, and it was already valuable back then. Yes, it was. Uh, Eighty thousand US dollars was the price. Yep. Back then. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm was checking on Corner 24. Today, the average is 137 thousand US dollars, which is a 70 percent increase in two years' time. I sold mine for a little shy of seventy thousand dollars a week before I realized that it was going to be discontinued. That was uh, yeah, that was end of nineteen, something like that. No, end of twenty. End of twenty. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. Okay, the Milgauss. I also checked that one. Mm -hmm. That had uh, a modest thirty-four percent increase in two years' time. Which one? Both um, models. Um, no, this the, the um, both models. Okay. Yeah. The, and then the, the, the still in the collection models. Yeah. Okay. With exactly. The green exactly. sapphire. And I checked the Richard Mill RM11. Tell me. 185,000 US dollars in September 19. But the increase? 42%. 42% of an RM11. The world must be mad. And I also checked the Bitcoin price. If you want to know that, what's yes. the rest? <laughs> Tell me the big Three hundred forty-five percent in two years' time. How many Bitcoins do you have? Uh, I can't reveal that. I'm sorry. What's with the whole secret? That's the, that's the golden rule. How this is the most discreet billionaire sitting right next to me with with drinking warm bubblies. Nick Meyer. That's how it works. But it's fun to know that, of <laughs> course, the, the market was already. Uh, increasing in value it mm -hmm. was really going well but although we had our crises in the past two years yeah looking at the world where we're now what's what's happening um the market doesn't seem to bother i think people are sitting at home and they're bored and they want to buy a watch the retailers they have been closed what do they do they go through the secondary market they check watch box chrono 24 all the secondary markets and they have also been you know, they boomed. That was a, um, they received quite a reinvestment in uh, Corner 24 two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. It's mad. So the secondary market is, has never, ever been stronger. Yeah. But also the revival of, uh, you know, the Richemont numbers are as good, maybe even better than before COVID. Yeah. 
Uh, I think Swatch Group is still struggling a little bit, but I know for a fact that retailers in Denmark, they have waiting lists for a normal Seamaster 300 and a normal Speedmaster Moon. Can you imagine that? Okay. Waiting lists. Because in my, it could be me, but for me, Swatch seemed to be less visible compared to LVMH, compared to Richemont, right, in the past year. I don't think it's a bad idea at all. I know that Omega is enjoying an immense success. And uh, I think that our good friend Waco has also pushed the importance of the Speedmasters. Yeah. Uh, you know, normal Speedmasters from before the most current uh, launch are, you know, increasing ever so slightly. But every time there's a new auction, there's a new modern Speedmaster increasing in value. Yeah. So yeah. the True. most recognizable chronograph in the world, the Omega Speedmaster Moon, is becoming quite collectible. Yeah. No matter the model, I'm not talking about Snoopy Awards, which already been sold three times uh, retail, but that was already from the beginning. But just normal, you know, stable horse moon watches selling above retail. They're doing quite well. They're doing really well. We're living in a healthy market, <laughs> so uh, that gives us enough room also to, to proceed with another 100 episodes. Um I would like to go to the next stage, and that is uh, two weeks ago we discussed with you our uh, what started as a joke uh, to to find our own ultimate chronograph. Yes, sir. Um, and we did also uh, a shout out to you guys. Please uh, share your thoughts. Okay, what should we look at? What is it a good chronograph? How should it look like? Mm. I have some input uh, from you. Thank you very much for that. We are not sponsored by Mac or Apple. No, no, no. We're gone. <laughs> uh, Isa Gavich, he uh, had uh, some nice input. He said, why don't you two do two limited editions? One Christian Hagen, one Nick Meyer. With the Christian, a little more crazy, colorful and adventurous. And the Nick Meyer would be more refined and classic, but with some nice details. So I'm going to do an erotic uh, chronograph. An er <laughs> <laughs> a crazy erotic chronograph, yeah. but the idea of having uh, a, a two limited editions, yeah, maybe. L mm -hmm. Let's. I think it's a good idea, and, and I like, I, I it. like uh, uh, the way you uh, think. you perceive our taste as well. Yeah. Um, the other one is a skeleton chrono that is easy to read. No that skeleton watches are easy to read. Yeah, but I think that's the 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 the. the, the the, the assignment that he takes on us, Morton Christensen. Thank you very much. Actually, it would be you won't skeletonize the the sub dials, so actually, it could be quite legible. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Morton. Yeah. Good input. I like that. Okay, and Alex Rivich uh, also responded. Your chrono should have second hand and sub dial counting running constantly, and only one button should it have. If you reset the chrono, goes all over again. One sub dial. Uh, I don't know if I'm. Sounds like a mono pusher. It sounds a bit like a mono yeah. pusher. Yeah, I like mono pushers, but I'm. I also find it maybe a little too somewhat elite. Yeah, it's not your everyday chrono. It's not a workhorse. It? No, it's more like it's. At, I love mono pushers. I do because too because of the technical complexity. Absolutely, but it's uh, probably. I think we should stick to a chronograph. And Daniel Cool. Hi, Daniel. A slim 39 to 41 millimeter, no date, manual wind flyback chronograph in stainless steel. Uh, I mean, that is a very reasonable suggestion. I, I would stick to that. Yeah. I mean, my sweet spot is around the 4042. Yeah, 4042. And yeah. I think I think you, if, if I hear you and if I hear myself, we should go to the core. So not too fancy, not too crazy. Yeah, but what uh, focusing on what is really relevant for a chronograph? Yeah, um, I think we have to to find that out. The legibility is extremely important to me. I want to be able to see what time it is right away. See that that's kind of difficult on a sixteen fifty five for John. I know that, uh, but still on a chronograph, since it's a chronograph, you have to be able to read uh, the results and the time right away. The legi legibility is important, so. To me, either a black dial or a white dial. Okay, yeah. I think uh, please keep on commenting, even if it's episode 
number 100. Of course, you may celebrate us. Uh, that's fine. Or yourself. But you could also give us uh, additional input because we're going to continue our search. I think we have decided as much as that. Uh, and we would love to hear your input on uh, on the ultimate chronograph. Absolutely. Strap or bracelet? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm more a, a strap guy. But I'm not strapping. necessarily leather, I guess. Um, I don't think that if you look at the environment right now, if you look at sustainability and the use of, of cow hides, if you like, yeah. uh, I think if, if you look at Grubel Force, uh, they stopped doing leather straps. Yeah. So I, I know that, you know, rubber straps are really cool. And the rubber straps, you can also today, if, if you look at the Linda Verdelin rubber straps, 25% of their rubber straps are actually made by recycled. Uh, materials that's cool i think that's that's a cool move um the only downside on rubber straps i think you 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 really sweat uh during hot summer days with a rubber strap rolex solved that with that little membrane that lifts their uh, oyster flex rubber strap a little bit from the skin yeah so you don't sweat underneath that's really clever yeah. i haven't seen that in a rubber strap before uh, or maybe just, you know, a, a perforated tropical strap where you can actually breathe. Yeah, that's also an option. Yeah. But I, I, I fully agree. I think it's also good to keep focus on what's essential on a chronograph. Yeah. No fancy straps or bracelets no. either. No, no. So rubber is it. So we have to find something that, that, uh, that fits our needs. I'm, I fully agree. Yeah. I think the whole uh, product development process is going... Quite smooth between you and me. Should we start to put some sketches onto the paper? Do you like a do you like a square, a torno, a rounded? Do you like strap shoulders? We have to consider that as well. Yeah, I mean, we look at the Ike pot for for instance, uh, where the rubber strap, which by the way smells so much like vanilla, <laughs> uh, um, and that was actually concealed into the case. So you didn't have yeah true you didn't have the uh, the bracelet or the strap shoulders. Do you I, like something like that? I li I also like that from an aesthetic point of view. Yeah, it's beautiful. True. Yeah, Very true. But it also yeah it 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 pretty much depends on actually what kind of watch we're coming up with, of course. Yeah. So that's also an uh, another thing we have to find out. Okay, what brand, what price range. Um, and also, of course, doing a watch is very difficult because you, I mean, you came for this episode 100 with your Uwerwerk. Yeah. And I came with a Frittone. I mean, we have our favorites. We have our minds set on certain models and brands. So doing your own watch, I mean, would you wear it every day? So you have to be better than your Uwerwerk or your Rolex. Yeah, well, the better, it has to be different because I think for yeah, me, the watch should be different. a daily wearer. Yes. I should be convinced uh, uh, that I, I, I'm going to wear that watch every single day. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, so, but uh, I hear you. It's, it's, uh, yeah, and we have to align your taste and mine taste as well. Absolutely. So I think we, uh, you want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. It started right here. We're going to do our episode own watch. number 100. Yeah. Let's do we it. We don't know what, it, what it's going to look like, but we're going to do it. This is the official, non official kickoff. Let's put it like that. So, do we have anything else to talk about now that we just revealed that we want to do a watch? Uh, how you, many, how many, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How many people do you think have said exactly that and never come up with a watch or come up with a shitty looking watch? This is a huge risk. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, I think uh, uh, our trust is at stake here, uh, and our reputation, maybe. <laughs> yeah, and our, you know, pretending we have a, a great taste. Good. I can't pour champagne anymore. This is why I didn't do the actual champagne too. Yeah, well, because of this know. waste. Once the camera is uh, is off, I'm gonna lick this off the table. Okay. No, but um, tell me some more about numbers. I, I love numbers. I know that our listeners and our viewers, they love numbers as well. How's the market these days? It's really picking up. It's really picking up? Yeah. Um, I think you, 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 we're now in a process of a constant spillover. So already for years, it's very difficult to obtain a Rolex 
on the secondary <laughs> market is becoming higher and higher. Same for the steel pateks, same for the royal oaks. Yeah. So people start looking ahead. And the next phase was and still is uh, a group of indie watches. And I think there you see the the, 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 the big rises as well. Yeah. You see uh, small brands that are that were a bit struggling three, four years ago selling their watches there. Mm. Their highly expensive watches mm. now have waiting lists as well. Brands like De Betune, brands like Zapek, uh, uh, I think MBNF, they easily sell out editions. Um, and that may be part of that the market is growing and people are looking for alternatives for the non-obtainable mm. uh, brands. It's funny because... Um When we think auctions, we automatically think about Philips because they just have amazing watches. But I actually got a preview on a September auction at Bonhams. That was so cool because that was a wonderful Doxa uh, diver's watch from uh, Sub 300 from uh, 1970, which happens to be my year of birth. Yeah. You know, that was a, a 5512 Submariner. And, and that was a... Uh, Katia American uh, quartz chronograph in gold with gold bracelet. You know, regular stuff that you don't see a lot on the before mentioned uh, uh, auctions at Philips. Yeah. I mean, that's really high end. Double that, name this, uh, uh, you know, uh, provenance that. But the Bottoms auction, it was, I, you know, I could probably afford like 30, 35% of all the watches. And I would not have to pamper them. These were just cool, everyday wearers. That's true. Actually, you It's know, what, what is the auction house where I bought my most watches in the past? Fellows? Oh, Bonhams. Oh, Bonhams. Yeah, actually, I did buy quite some watches there, there over the years. Because of exactly this, mm. they're not that uh, visible as, as, as Philips. Philips is actually the the the, the or range that is Absolutely, about the top entertainment, dog. the top dogs, yeah. and the, you, I think the majority of the people go there just to be entertained, not to buy watches. Yeah, Bonhams is a bit more shy in terms of their communication, mm. but they have very surprising lots every now and then. I was really surprised because I was I was expecting for Bonhams to try to compete with Sotheby's, Christie's, uh, Philips, etc., and Decorum. You know, going for, oh, we just made a record. Yeah. Instead, every Tom, Dick and Harry can actually bid on these pieces, yeah. which is really nice. Yeah. Like uh, Watches of Knightsbridge. Yeah, and Fellows, you already mentioned. Fellows as well, yeah. Those so, are, uh, uh, let's let's call it run-of-the-mill uh, auction houses, a bit more uh, um, locally oriented. Sure. But due to e-commerce and due to online auction platforms, they mm. have a worldwide audience. We know it from Brun Rasmussen as well. Yeah, that too. That, uh, that really opened up the market on all levels. Of course... The, the market for 100,000 plus watches sure. is is small. We're talking euros. We're here. talking euros. But, yeah. but the market for a thousand euro and up watches is maybe way larger because many people can afford and are now tempted also to follow the auction houses instead of only Chrono24 or your local retailer. See, if I had been wearing a chronograph today, I would have told you, boss man, we, uh, we totally went off our schedule 20 minutes but we are not wearing a chronograph so we are almost 24 minutes now yeah. i will okay this because it's episode 100 i'm so glad you do yeah all right so we're going to end it here we're going to finish this uh, bottle of uh, warm bubblies thank you you're going to lick the table yes afterwards. i'm going to lick the table yes. and uh, please do visit the the web shop there's a lot of fun stuff going on in there and some great uh, cassie oaks if you like The winder is going to be offered on the uh, web in the web shop as well, right? I think so. Yeah. 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 All right. So a lot of good stuff coming up. We promise you, there's going to be a lot more fun things in the back and some books and yeah, stuff we like have that. To we're going to make this a little gentlemanly, a manly uh, uh, room where we're going to do our recordings in the future. Remember to subscribe. Remember to visit all our Instagram profiles. We we, we have quite a few. Uh, we're going to write everything uh, underneath here. Go to the web shop, read our articles, have a great day, enjoy, uh, enjoy life. Have some bubblies, cold ones. Thank okay. you. Okay, bye-bye.